Hi, it's Janice. This is a quick summary of what antimicrobial stewardship is and what it means to us. So this is all about antibiotics and how we've used them in the past, if we're using them properly or not. We've known for quite some time that antibiotics do not work against viruses such as the common cold, flu, or sore throat. However, they are helpful in treating bacterial infections like strep throat, TB, whooping cough, or urinary tract infections. Antibiotics have also made their way into what we eat, into our food source. Animals are being treated with antibiotics and then we consume them. So all of this over prescribing antibiotics, patients taking antibiotics not as prescribed, unnecessary antibiotic use in agriculture, all of this is leading to antibiotic resistance. In the hospital, it's poor infection control practices, poor hand hygiene, and lack of rapid lab tests that all contribute to the antibiotic resistance problem. The CDC, as well as others, are calling for urgent action to be taken in order to help reduce the antibiotic resistance and the infections that they cause. In the U.S., over 2 million patients are infected with antibiotic-resistant germs, and at least 23,000 of those patients die from those infections. The World Health Organization recognized this quite a while ago, and they have a call to action to combat drug resistance, so making hospitals aware of it and having programs in place. The Joint Commission has also adopted it as a standard now that organizations have to have an antimicrobial stewardship program based on current scientific literature. So what is our role in educating, promoting, and monitoring compliance with prescribed antibiotics? It's being good stewards of antibiotic use and practice. As good stewards, helping protect patients from antibiotic-resistant infections is our goal. If a patient doesn't need a catheter or a tube, we shouldn't be putting it in. Each time we introduce something into a patient's body, it creates a pathway where bacteria can enter that body. We should be preventing the spread of infection while patients are in the hospital setting. We do this by proper hand hygiene, gelling in, gelling out to prevent contamination of patients. And when a patient does have a bacterial infection, we should be using the proper antibiotic for that specific organism. The CDC has the Get Smart material for improving antibiotic prescribing. So staying up to date with clinical guidelines and local antibiotic resistance patterns in our area is key, as well as communicating with the patients about what the expectations are. And then they strongly encourage use of their educational pamphlets or flyers. Here's an example of one of the CDC flyers that discusses the difference between when an antibiotic is needed and when it's not based on the signs and symptoms or the patient's illness. There are other resources like this that show that antibiotics are not for the cold or flu. Here's some talking points for us, for every patient, every time they have an antibiotic. So remind them to do take their antibiotic exactly as prescribed. Don't skip doses. Do take only the drugs prescribed for them. Don't share the drugs with anybody else. Do prevent infections by washing their hands and getting vaccinated. And don't insist that an antibiotic be given if your healthcare professional doesn't think that you should have one. And then some other key points for us, if the patient still doesn't believe that they shouldn't have an antibiotic when it's not necessary, you can remind them that antibiotics are life-saving drugs and they need, need to be used wisely. And they treat bacterial infection only, not viruses. And the statistics about 2 million people each year are infected with the superbugs or the bacteria that have now become resistant to antibiotics. And of those 2 million people, at least 23,000 of those patients die each year in the U.S. And there are side effects with antibiotics sometimes. And if they have a severe enough reaction, it could warrant a visit to the emergency department. Antibiotics also kill off good bacteria in our bodies. And this could lead to uh, not fun symptoms like diarrhea or yeast infections. 
reminding patients that taking antibiotics when we don't need to take them doesn't make sense, and how we use antibiotics today is going to impact how well antibiotics are going to work in the future. It takes years to develop new antibiotics, so we need to work well with the ones that we currently have available. And one of the world's biggest health threats right now is from these superbugs or the bacterial infections that no longer respond to the antibiotics that we have available to us. So everyone has to work together to use antibiotics wisely. Our role as antibiotic stewards is to know why the patient is on an antibiotic, determine if the patient can switch from an IV to an oral antibiotic, ensure that the antibiotic is still needed, discontinue unnecessary antibiotics of C in C. diff patients, reassess antibiotics at each transfer point, and then educate patients about proper antibiotic use and infection control practices, like washing their hands. Thanks for listening, and here's some resources.